going to retrieve, I'd like to confirm. Hey, I've been getting the run around for two hours, and I'm well, coming up. Can you tell me approximately how much money was missing? Was it over a thousand dollars? I'm sure that Billy did make that figure up. Who are these babies? More important, where did they come from? Who are their fathers? You ever noticed he always looks at me when he says things like that? Anybody seen Billy? I need this phone number from Billy. She's at the county adoption agency. <sighs> but she's got this girl's phone number. My piece on girl gangs in East L.A. Trouble with the kids today is they don't have the patience we had. I remember waiting days, weeks on a story. Me too. I'd be there waiting for days on end. Staring at the phone, sitting on a bar stool. We had what it took. That's good news, Vicki. As long as you're aware of the responsibilities this decision is going to put on you. I know I said I wanted to give it up. But after carrying the baby for eight months, I just can't. Besides, Jimmy and I have been talking. And I think he might marry me. Well, I wish you all the best. Listen, I'll keep your file open just in case you change your mind. No, I'm not going to change it. I really think I'm making the right decision. Well, good luck, dear. And when the baby's born, be sure and bring him or her by. Oh, sure. Listen, thank you for being so understanding about all this. Oh, it's my job. Goodbye. Goodbye. Does that happen very often when a mother decides to keep her baby? I'm not sure it's happening this time. What do you mean? It could be she's decided to sell her baby on the black market. Black market babies? That sounds like some kind of bad movie. Oh, she's a very troubled girl and poor. She's perfect prey for one of those baby brokers. We're not talking about a legitimate third-party adoption. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong with those. How do you tell the difference between those and the black market ones? 
The honest lawyer arranging an adoption will charge only a legitimate fee for his services. $500, say, or 1000 whatever his normal fee is. The shady ones charge many, many times more. I suppose people are desperate enough to pay it. You better believe it. I've heard of cases where people have paid $100,000 to arrange an adoption. How's the series going? Uh, frankly, I'm, I'm kind of stalled. Hmm? There's a big, big story to be written about black market babies, and I, I just don't know how to go after it. Black market, you mean selling them? There are doctors and lawyers involved right in this city, and I don't know how to pin one of them down. Maybe I can help you. I've got this friend, Ray McIntyre, in the DA's office. Why don't I see if he'd like to have a drink with us after work tonight? Thanks, Lou. I appreciate it. What's the matter? What are you looking for? My contact book. I can't imagine what I did with it. It's got all my phone numbers. Phone numbers? Rossi! Here. Oh, where did you find it? I borrowed it. You what? And now you got it back, so no big deal. No big deal? You took my contact book without asking me? Just all be cool. I needed a number. So you helped yourself to one of my sources? Let's just all keep That's right, and now you got it back, so I admitted it to your face, so I was honest about it. You call that honest to swipe my source? Keep calm, let's keep calm. Boy, honesty sure doesn't pay around here. Okay, I retract that statement. I didn't take it. Oh, you didn't take it. You just admitted that you did. That's right. Well, now I deny it. You obviously don't appreciate honesty, so forget it. I never took your book. Rossi! Please. Rossi. Rossi. A nice reporter does not do a thing like that. And if you ever touch her book again, I'm personally going to roll all your fingers through the typewriter. Okay? Okay. Sure, Lou. Thanks. How do they get the babies in the first place? Advertise for them. Advertise? What magazines do babies read? Oof. I'm serious. They advertise for pregnant women. And the ads can be pretty blatant, too. Picture of a gorgeous tropical isle. And copy it says, don't worry, have your baby and a nice vacation, too. Thanks. The broker pays for the vacation? Sure, in order to get the baby afterward. And why can't your office do something about that kind of obvious advertising? A lot of the traffic is between states. And unfortunately, we have no federal laws covering this. Well, I haven't seen too many ads like that. Where else do they get them? A lot of pregnant women come to these people on uh, referrals. A doctor or a nurse gets a fee from a broker for sending them a girl who's worried about whether to keep her baby or not. Well, of course, they tell her, yes. <laughs> they tell her a lot more than that. They tell her that they'll pay her expenses, pay for having the baby, find the baby a good home, and give her a little something extra besides. I hate myself for saying this, but... Doesn't sound so bad, hmm? Not really, not if they do all that. What's so terrible about it? I can tell you. Because babies shouldn't go to the highest bidder. Money shouldn't be the criterion for finding parents. Right. You see, a legitimate adoption agency cares about the welfare of the kid. I mean, they keep records, uh, make sure that the child is placed with suitable parents, do follow-ups. Whereas these other bums take the money and run. The new parents don't know anything about the baby's background. And the mother has no control over what kind of home her baby will be placed in. Of course, the broker tells the mother that the adoptive parents are humanitarian millionaires. And he tells the parents that the baby is the love child of a movie starlet and a nuclear physicist. And will grow up gorgeous and brilliant. That's the idea. So the broker takes any baby he can get and places it with any parents who will pay the price and lies to everybody. And yet no law is broken? Oh, yeah. California Penal Code number 181. Receiving money for placing a person in the custody of another, etc. Slavery. Mm -hmm. Works for these cases, too. If you can get someone to complain, but no one will step forward. I can tell you right now, the doctor is up to his ears, but we can't nail him. Suppose I took a shot at him. It sure has total cooperation for us. My husband and I have tried everything. Well, the human body can be pretty contrary sometimes. I've tried taking my temperature every hour on the hour, keeping charts, graphs, 
Figuring my cycle, figuring the phases of the moon. How, how about a good witch doctor? You know when I'll go to him. I don't. Well, I suppose the first thing we should do is give you a thorough examination. Oh, I, uh, I already went through that with the other doctors. And I'm fine. It's my husband. His problem, I mean. Uh, psychological problem? No. No, it, it's physical. Are you sure he's sterile? Positive. Oh, poor darling, he wants a child so badly. We both do. Well, why did you come to me? I was given your number by a friend of mine, Joan Simpson, whose sister is a nurse at the hospital, as someone who might be able to help. In what way? We want to adopt. Well, there are agencies for that sort of thing. I... The state agencies have been no help to us at all. You won't believe how long they said we had to wait. Four years, five, something like that. We thought that maybe you might be able to put us in touch with someone, a, a woman who's pregnant and has a child she didn't want to keep. No, no, not right now. Well, something might come up, though. Oh, we'd be so grateful. We've wanted a child so badly. We're really quite desperate. We do have some money put aside. Well, let's not talk about money right now. I, I do hear of cases now and then. If I could just leave my name and number? Yes, do that. And may I suggest that you both come by um, tomorrow evening? Both? Yes, I may be able to help. But I would like to talk to your husband, too. We'll continue in a moment here on a &D. It's so frustrating. This doctor is nibbling at the bait and I can't reel him in. Why not? He insists on meeting my husband. So? What do you mean, so? A pretty girl like you shouldn't have any trouble finding a husband. What do you want to find a husband for? Her obstetrician wants to meet him. Oh, well. No, I'm doing a story about baby selling and I'm posing as a woman who wants to adopt. Well, because her husband can hack it. Has he tried oysters? Oh, you two are a lot of fun, you know that? My point was, I don't see your problem. The doctor wants to meet your husband. We'll find you one. No big deal. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. This sounds like misrepresentation. Well, what do you think it is when she says she wants to adopt? That's just what I mean. The whole thing sounds like misrepresentation. Ah, oh, come on, Charlie. I don't want our reporters lying about their identities in order to cover a story. It's not ethical. Well, I don't think it's ethical for doctors and lawyers to get rich on black market adoptions. Lou, Charlie, what these guys do hurts a lot of people. Innocent babies and desperate parents. And anything she has to do to expose them is justified. Well, okay. Only please try to avoid saying, this is my husband. Say, this is Bill, or Phil, something like that. Sure, sure. Doctor, this is Bill, who I'm not really married to. He's just the guy who's been trying unsuccessfully to make me pregnant for the last six years. When you two get through arguing about the ethics, would someone mind telling me where I'm supposed to find this Bill? Pretty girl like you shouldn't have any trouble finding a husband. Art, how would you like to marry me? <laughs> I always knew you were going to ask me someday. I was just wondering how I was going to let you down easily. It's for a story. I mean, act as my husband. You wouldn't have to marry me. Act as your husband? I think I like the sound of that. It'd just be for a few days. Gee, somehow I thought we'd last a little longer than that. Just long enough to convince a slightly shady doctor that we can't have children. Uh-huh. And exactly what do I have to do to help convince him? Nothing. Honest. Not a thing. I'm in charge. You don't do a thing. No wonder we don't have any children. We'd like to meet with you, doctor, at whatever time is convenient. Mrs. Snowman, I've been thinking, and I'm not really sure how wise it is. Get your hopes up. And your husband's hopes. When the chances are, well, they're very slim. Dr. Davidson, we'd do anything to have a baby. Money is no object. I understand how you feel, Mrs. Nelson. 
Well, why don't you just come in and we can at least talk about it. Let's say 8.30 this evening. Oh, thank you, Doctor. He's not that kind of a doctor. Oh. Well, we'll tell him it's morning sickness. Or evening sickness. Oh, boy. You okay? Of course. Look, I'm a pro. We've got an assignment, and I'm gonna be... Oh, In there. Thank you. through the appointment. We can't afford to make that doctor suspicious. Oh, me? No, he never really married to me. Well, it's a flattering thought. Uh, but I've, I've got work to do anyway. Look, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. I'll find you somebody. I hope you appreciate this. I had plans for this evening. It wasn't my idea. What do you mean it wasn't your idea? Lou said you asked for me. Lou was trying to be funny. What's so funny about asking for me? You're right. It isn't funny. May I point out to you I'm doing you a favor? I know, Rossi, and I appreciate it. I don't like it either, but I'm a professional. I can accept an assignment, play my part, and not take it personally. Why don't you try to do the same? Mrs. Newman? Mr. Newman? Come in, please. Mr. Newman? Don't take it personally, dear. Davidson? This is Joe. Hello, Joe. Hi. Let's sit down. Thank you. Joe, let me tell you something straight. Now, your problem is very, very common. It's shared by thousands and thousands of men. My, my problem? It's nothing to be ashamed of. I can't stress that too heavily. It's no reflection on your manhood, anything of that sort. Of course, that's what I keep telling Joe. Yeah, well, you know... In every other respect, he's very masculine, believe me. Good. Good. Tell me, Mr. Newman, what do you do? He's unemployed. Oh, don't get me wrong, Joe's had jobs, lots of jobs, but uh, he's just a creative kind of guy, and he just hasn't found the right thing for himself. Yes, well... But I have a good bit of money that my family left me, so that's no problem, thank goodness. Mr. Newman, do you have any history of any psychological or mental problems? No. But I have to ask you this, uh, do you have a drinking problem? Me? A drinking problem? He's just a social drinker, for the most part. He does have a lot of time on his hands. Well, we do have to be careful where we place the infant, the, the home situation, that sort of thing. Does that mean you know of a baby? It's very possible there may be one available. Great. But uh, we have to go through several other steps first. Like what? Well, I'll set up an appointment with Mr. Carlin. Now, he's an attorney. He'll handle the actual details. Fine. Fine. His customary fee is $1,000, by the way. $1,000. Will a check be all right? That'll be fine. <laughs> and that covers everything? No. No, the, the check will be for $1,000, and there will be an additional $9,000 in cash. $1,000 when you meet, and the rest upon delivery to the baby. That sounds funny, doesn't it? A lawyer delivering a baby. Very funny. So... The lawyer gets a check for a thousand plus a thousand in cash up front. That's right. You can give it to him when you meet. Would um, tomorrow evening be all right? Fine. Shall we come here at the same time? No, no, not here. He'll come to your place. Well, after all, Mrs. Newman, we are placing the infant in your home, and it's uh, 
It's only proper that we see how you and Mr. Newman live. Lee Grant will continue in a moment here on b and To Lee Grant. Okay, now are we absolutely sure that this guy's a crook and not just overpriced? Lou, she went out of her way to make me sound like a bum. Did she have to go far out of her way? She said I drank, couldn't hold the job, couldn't... couldn't do a lot of stuff. And I did it on purpose, Lou, to see if it made any difference what kind of parents they gave the baby to. And it made no difference at all, as long as we had lots of money. Lots of money? How much is that in dollars? Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. And nine of it has to be in cash, eventually. Right now, we need a check for a thousand and another thousand in cash. The check is probably make it look legitimate. Sure. Makes sense. Afterwards, the only record will be that the lawyer got a thousand, which is not a line. They want it tonight. The check for a thousand and a thousand in cash. And eight thousand later. Is that a problem? It's a big story. We'll get the money for you. Great. Well, let's go. Just a minute. Just, does this mean I have to go on posing as her husband at home? So try to look like a boozer who can't do anything. You think you can handle it? And exactly what am I getting out of this? All you can drink. Oh, I'm serious. Now, this is her story, and I'm doing half the work. I've got half the credit. Oh, now, wait a minute. You want a husband? Just hang on. That's blackmail. If I share the work, I share the credit. Lou, what about it? Lou, do I have to put up with this? Well, uh, now, um, I can see some justification for uh, both points of view. I think we have to be dispassionate and uh, logical and uh, try to find some compromise. Oh, come on. What do you mean, come on? I'm doing the girl gang story and I have to drop that to give you my time? Look, I'm working on three stories. I'm giving up all my time. You have to spend two nights all your time. Two nights? Shut up! Both of you. Close your eyes. It could be Henry Kissinger. Now, this story is more important than individual egos. That's Billy's story, so she'll write it. What? Now, Rossi is working hard on it, too, so he'll share the byline. Lou! But her name will go first. What? Now, that is my decision, and I think it's fair, and the subject is closed. Any questions? Yeah. How the hell am I going to get $10,000 out of Mrs. Pinchon? $10,000? That's a one followed by four zeros. Yeah, I, I know it's an awful lot of money, Mrs. Pinchon, but... We think it's worth it. Do you, indeed? Besides which, the money will be marked. I, I have every confidence that we're going to get it back. We're working very closely with the DA's office on it. Why don't they put up the 10000 then? Oh, no, Mr. Hume, I understand. And I agree. I think it is an important story. And I would like very much to see those people exposed. I'd like it better if it could be done for 5000 but if 10 is what it takes, you'll get it. That's terrific. See, we we have to let them call the shots uh, for the moment. They're, uh, they're very cagey. They're despicable. The emotions they prey on are very deep, Mr. Hume. And very basic. I know. For years, I wanted to adopt a child. Really? I didn't know that. Matthew and I were never able to have a child of our own. Although we very much wanted one. He always hoped that someday we might... get lucky. Well, if we had adopted, I would have had someone to take over this newspaper. Sorry, Mrs. Pitcher. Well, oh, cheer up, Mr. Hume. Maybe I'll adopt you. Letter to the editor, Charlie? No, this is an envelope for them. Close the door, Lou. What's up? Sealed orders, Chief. Laundry receipts, 1959 to 64. That's the cash for Billy to give to the lawyer or not. Laundry receipts. Good thinking. Well, that's a lot of money. Come on, Charlie. I'm not going to be anywhere to get mugged. Probably not. 
Supposing you should get in an accident, God forbid. And supposing somebody should go through your clothes. You want to handcuff it to my wrist? Lou, we're hoping to get that money back. That's why those bills are marked. Hmm? Oh, please, don't wave it around like that. Come on, there's nobody around but a bunch of reporters. Yeah, that's right, and I know what we pay them. <laughs> don't worry. It's all a matter of how you carry it off. You gotta not act like a guy who has a thousand dollars in his pocket. See what I mean? What are you doing? Stocking your medicine cabinet with some of my things. Well, see, who in the world do you imagine is gonna look in my medicine cabinet? Lots of people look in medicine cabinets. This guy could be a snoop. He gets here, says he has to use the head, then checks out your bathroom, which better look like our bathroom. What are you cooking? Cabin's liver for dinner. Look, I hate liver. Ask me how much I care. Hey, I'm your husband, remember? For the night, anyhow. For the evening, Rossi. Just for the early evening. That's probably Lou. I'll get it. All set? I think so. Rossi, will you come and get your suitcase out of the living room? What's he got a suitcase here for? Oh, he's trying to make it look authentic, scattering little souvenirs of himself around the apartment. Yeah, I got a pair of my socks soaking in the bathroom basin. Nice, that's a nice touch. Charming. Yeah, well, you know, husband and wife, intimate. Which reminds me, I want to talk to you about a couple of things in the medicine cabinet. I'm warning you, Rossi. When's the guy coming? Any minute. Have you got the money? Yeah, yeah. I got a check for a thousand, another thousand in marked bills. The check's made out to you, Billy, so you can deposit it in your account to cover the check you're going to write the lawyer. How come I don't get to write the check? Because your name is supposed to be Newman, and banks have a way of getting happy when you write checks using other people's names. But you can hand the man the cash if you'd like. Yeah. Don't feel too comfortable carrying that over here. I haven't handled that much cash since the Army. What were you, a quartermaster? No. I ran a crap game at Fort Hood. I'd invite you to stay for dinner, but it might look a bit suspicious when the lawyer arrives. Mm, uh, that's okay. Smells like liver, and I hate liver. Me too. Boy, is that the worst smelling stuff? I'll say. It's not too good looking either. Or tasty. Mm. All right. As I said, you're not invited anyway, either of you. Uh oh. I better get out of here. Is there a back door? I haven't sneaked out a back door since the army. How were you, Spot? No, he ran the crack game at Fort Hood. Call me when the guy's gone. Good luck. Coming. Uh, hello. Hi, uh, Mrs. Newman. I'm Ernest Carlin. How do you do, Mr. Carlin? Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, this is Joe. How do I've you been do? expecting you. Thank you. So, uh, are you going to be able to find us a child, Mr. Carlin? Well, it's possible. You do folks don't really look as though you have much room to spare. It's room you've been at most. Oh, yeah, look around. Bedroom's through there. Also the bathroom. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, what I meant was, do you really have room for a child? Well, uh, if we had a kid, we'd move. To be very honest with you, I never cared for this place anyway. Oh, I wasn't criticizing your home. No, 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 no. I wouldn't blame you if you did. It's really kind of tacky. Would you care to sit down? Thank you. Is there a child ready for adoption, Mr. Collin? Well, why should I keep you folks in suspense? The answer is yes. There's a good chance we may have a child for you by Monday evening. Really? That soon? Oh, Mr. Carlin. We're making arrangements with the prospective mother right now. <laughs> Incidentally, this is quite a story. The baby is the product of a love affair between a professor of English literature and a college cheerleader. Quite an attractive girl. Holy smoke, what potential a kid like that could have. It certainly could. Did my associate explain to you the financial arrangements? Oh, yes, he did. Uh, should I make the check out to you? Yes, that'll be fine. Ernest J. Carlin, K-A-R-L-A-N. Right. And here's the rest of the down payment. One thousand in cash. Oh, good. I hope you folks understand why we have to do this. There are so many expenses. We understand. And we're very, very grateful. Thank you. Now you want eight thousand more on delivery, right? Actually, I'm afraid it's going to be more like thirteen thousand. Thirteen? Thirteen. Yes, the total is now fifteen thousand. <laughs> I'm really very sorry, but uh, our expenses, like everybody else's, have gone right through the roof. Ah, oh, gee, I don't know. Joe, please. Okay, okay. If that's what it costs, that's what it costs. 
Now, we're working with a clinic near Gorman where the baby's to be born. That's where we'll contact you. In Gorman? Yes. There shouldn't be any problem. There's a nice little motel there, the uh, Palomino. Now, you folks check in, and we'll get in touch with you Monday night. Well, good evening. How's the story on black market adoptions coming, Mr. Hume? Fine. Just fine. Which floor are you getting off on, Mr. Hume? Oh, I'm getting off on six. There's just been one little problem. Yes? And what is the problem? Now they want 15,000. <laughs> We'll continue in a moment here on AMD. AMD returns to Lou Brandt. Why did it have to be Gorman? They're playing it safe, making us come to them. They don't want to travel any distance with the baby. That's why we're headed for the boondocks. We passed the boondocks an hour ago. We're headed for the Tulis. Awfully hot. Do you suppose that we could put the tab up and turn the air conditioner on? Who needs air conditioning with a convertible? Right. Do you suppose you could go a little faster? We've only seen two vehicles in the past half hour, a tractor and a melon truck, and they both passed us. What's your hurry? Oh, I get it. Can't wait to get to the motel, right? I didn't know myself till I looked around. Not even a good one. No mirror. Uh, also, no air conditioner. Hey, could be worse. At least we got a water bed. That's probably as close as any of their customers get to bathing. Who are you calling? Lou. to know about the money. Tell her to put it under the mattress for security. He thinks you should put it under the mattress. He said, what? Oh. Oh. Well, in that case, maybe you better just leave it in your wallet. Okay, I'll call you again as soon as they contact us. I just wanted to check in. 
Right. Okay, but... What are you doing? Turn on a movie. You want to watch a porno? Come on, it's either that or stand outside and listen to the ice machine. Oh, you watch it if you want to. I'm not going to. Suit yourself. Find that erotic? I don't. I don't find that the least bit erotic. It's too obvious, too explicit. It's a turn off. That's not erotic. Now that's erotic. Hi, Billy. Yeah, uh, how's it going? Why have I heard from you? Because we haven't heard anything ourselves. Not a word. This has been the longest five hours of my life. You don't suppose that they're wise to us? Huh? Nothing. There's nothing to do. We watched a movie on television. You just like me. As soon as I get into a hotel, I start watching old movies. What'd you see? Swinging in the rain and what happened to Bonnie? What's that, a whodunit? No. No, this movie is more like an everybody done it. Well, listen. I've uh, been talking to McIntyre. He's ready to move in the second you call him. Meanwhile, I guess you just got to sit tight. I know, and I will. I'll tell you something, Lou. Next time I do a story like this, it'll be a lot faster if I just have the baby myself. He's the best you could do. Sorry, they didn't have any with liver in them. Did you ask the guy at the desk if you could get another cup for this? Yeah, he just laughed. He didn't know there was a coffee maker. Says it must be left over from the previous owner. Oh, please let that be Carlin. I can't stand much more of this. Hello? Oh, hi. Uh, yeah, we were, we, we were just beginning to wonder about you. Boy, am I glad you called. Uh, yeah? Uh-huh, I see. Well, sure. Guess there's nothing else we can do. Okay. I didn't like the sound of that. Carlin is tied up on a case in L.A. and he hasn't been able to get away. He'll be here when he can. Maybe a couple of hours, or it may not be until morning. Oh, no! He says he'll call us when he gets here. So what do we do in the meantime? Well... As long as we have to be here until morning, Mrs. Newman. I suggest we try out the old water bed. What? To sleep on. To sleep on. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on PMB. Turns to Lou Grant. Seasickness. Mm. Oh, jeez, I was sleeping like a log until you started sloshing around. I'm sorry. But you weren't helping any. What do you mean? You snore. Really? I never realized. What does it sound like? It's grotesque. My husband used to do that. Jack mind. That was a slip. Forget I said that. Go back to sleep. I never knew you were married. I never told anybody. Let's just forget it, okay? How long were you married? A few years. 
I was very young. We got married in college. Bad experience, huh? No. Actually, pretty good while it lasted. What happened? I knocked him off. He knew too much. He met somebody else. They have three kids now. End of story. Good night. That's private, okay, Rossi? Sure. Okay. Three kids, huh? That must... That must feel strange. You never told anybody that, huh? Mm -hmm. It's funny. Two people go off on a story, and they get to know each other. For the first time. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you told me. I really appreciate you trusting me. Mm -hmm. I have a similar kind of thing in my life. I was in love for about four years. She was a wonderful woman. Funny, bright. I really felt I could have a life with her. She had a couple of kids. Even that was nice. I really went after her. Courted her, you know? And she finally, she fell in love with me. She wanted to get married. Somehow I got cold feet. Walked away from her. The baby's on its way. How far apart are the contractions? What? Oh. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I'm not awake. The lawyer called and they're bringing the baby over. We already called the DA and they're on their way too. Hi, girl. I hope you really nail that creep. What's the matter? Oh, I was just thinking. After we expose these people, what happens to the baby? They'll go to a licensed agency who will find it some good, qualified parents. Certainly not as good as Mr. and Mrs. Newman, but that'll be okay. It took so long. That's okay. I'll be back in a moment. Here you are, Mrs. Newman. Oh, how sweet. It's a lot of cash to carry around. I know, but we have to do it this way for a variety of reasons. I understand. Ooh. There's enough formula in there for one feeding, plus instructions on how to make it. I have plenty myself. There's some general information about baby care. Oh, don't worry. I'll take good care of you. Well, I'm a little pressed for time this morning, but uh, I'll be in touch. I hope you're very happy with your new baby. <laughs> Mr. Carlin, freedom is right. Congratulations, you two. We'll take it from here. 
thanks. We've been waiting for this chance a long time. That's good. I'm glad we helped. Hey, you'll need this stuff. Oh, good. Take good care of the baby. I mean, I know you will. Don't worry. We will. Is good, Billy. Doing good. Thanks. Thanks. What happened to the kid? Already placed. They seem like nice people. I checked them out. Well, you know, it's part of the story. Well, what was it, a boy or a girl? <sighs> you figured it away so fast. It was a girl. A good reporter always checks. <laughs> the death of a young Nigerian girl leads detectives to a ring of drug smugglers. Join us for the critically acclaimed drama Law and Order tonight. And now, a philandering businessman plots a high-tech murder on Colombo next on a, &A.